What, what, is, what, is, what is that thing? Big red hammer. Where do you put uh, Floyd in that conversation? I don't. No, wow. So we go like that. Mm -hmm. Right there's good. Big like a truck, but smooth like a cat. That's why they call me Big Daddy. What's going on out there in YouTube land? Well, well, well. There we go. Today we're with the Hall of Fame boxing champion, the legend in the flesh, two time, time champion. Yeah. We tied on that one. Man, 43 and one, silver medalist at the Olympics, Olympian, he represented the United States. Uh, we're over here at Franklin Boxing Gym down here in Tampa. So if you guys are in the area, you're looking to get in shape, you're looking to get your boxing career going, we appreciate the hospitality they had. Come check them out. They just opened a few weeks ago. They got a recovery room going, supplements. I mean, the works. It's a really cool facility. And like I said, we're blessed here today. I have Riddick in the house. Again, an ultimate legend, a guy that you know sold a, a billion pay-per-views basically, knocked people out left and right, somebody that you could put up against just basically anybody in heavyweight history in a hypothetical matchup, and I think you'd like Riddick's odds. We were just joking, his left hand is six weeks in the hospital, right hand in the cemetery. He's put a lot of hurting on a lot of people over the years, but in the meantime, he's got a little bit stiff, a little bit tight himself, so we're gonna loosen him up a little today. Here's some stories, here's some interview questions, have him talk about you know, some of the history of boxing what got him into it, some of his friendships, and then some of the stories from the road. And uh, we'll see if we can get him moving a little bit better by the end of this. Ready? Absolutely, yes sir. So 3 and Out TV, check out the Instagram, YouTube. He's got a lot of content coming soon. You know, they're, they're getting the brand together, doing some gym stuff. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff that's gonna be in the works, some nutraceuticals, uh, just a really holistic brand. And you know, he's uh, taking advantage of a, of, a, of a big career, a big man, and you know, gonna make a big brand, I think, out of this too. So I remember, I'm big like a truck, but smooth like a caddy. That's why they call me Big Daddy. Big Daddy. He's got rhymes for days. All right, champ. So tell me what got you into boxing. What was what was the thing that got you into the gym as a kid? A kid in class called me Ribbit. Ribbit. I said Ribbit. Like frog? Yeah, he said Ribbit. Mm. I mean, that's not my name. He said, shut up, Ribbit. Right in the mouth. <laughs> And the kids said, Riddick, you're pretty good with your hands. Want me to call the gym for you? She, I said, yeah, she called the gym. I've been boxing ever since. And that was in Brooklyn? Yes, sir. Brooklyn, okay. New York. And you have a ton of brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. Do you still, do you still keep in touch with a lot of them? Absolutely. Okay, nice. And so how old were you when you started boxing? I was 13 when I started. It's kind of a late start, actually, a little bit, right? No, but it's normal. Okay. But um, you know why I started boxing? I, I, I know what to do. Got it. So how did you know that you had a, a special skill or talent for it? Like, when you went into the gym, were you, uh, did they feel like you were a natural? You picked it up pretty quickly? Well, I was natural because my brothers and sisters and my mama. Okay. He's... I could be sitting next to my mama. And she says something to me, and I may say, why well, I got to do that because I'm trying to be smart. She said, <laughs> So I got to the point where I could slip for Okay. <laughs> Get the and I, down. When all my brothers and sisters, this might may have a pork chop on the stove. I go eat the pork chop, and they want to come get me and want to beat me up. So I was always used to sip and roll and catch and shot. So it was second nature to me. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you, you knew Tyson a little bit growing up, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I met Tyson when I was nine years old. But he's older than you? By two years. By two years, okay. Yeah. Because uh, you were in the Olympics in 88, correct? Yes, sir. And so by that time, he was already the champ, right? So that must have been interesting seeing somebody kind of from your neighborhood that had already, you know, gotten money and gotten belts and you were still an amateur. Yeah, I always voted for him. Yes, yeah, sir. that's cool. So, you know, you, you represent the country, you represent the USA, you wear the Stars and Stripes, you get into the pros. Uh, tell me what that path felt like. You go from, you know, a kid not having a ton growing up and all of a sudden you got cameras, you're going on TV. What was that experience like? And I had 26 cars at one time. 26? 26. Woo. What was your favorite car? Uh, the Rolls Royce. Rolls. Did you have a driver? No. You drove it yourself? I, 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 was, I had a driver to take the fun out of it. Oh, got it. Got it. What, what, what other cars did you have that you really enjoyed? Mercedes Benz, big white Mercedes 600. Okay. I love the Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Um, I had a Corvette. I had a little bit of everything. Now, where did your nickname Big Daddy come from? Well, my mother, they used to call my mother Big Dot. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be connected to my mother always, so she's Big Dot, I'm Big Daddy. Okay. Big like a truck, but smooth like a cat. <laughs> 
Love it. Did any other your siblings, did they get into sports or box at all? No, sir. My brother used to play baseball. Okay. But he, I don't know, I guess he fell out of love with, with, with the baseball at one point. And so I'll leave it. So, you know, you're coming up, you know, you're, you're becoming a contender. Obviously, you know, you're the most well known for the trilogy with Holyfield being really the only guy that, you know, was able to put it on him like that, especially yeah, at the peak of his power. I tell you something. I mean, Holyfield, now we have a policy. Uh huh. You know what the policy is? What's that? If he keeps putting the name out of his mouth, I'm going to keep my foot out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, obviously, um, you know, he had become a big name in the late 80s and early 90s. Right. And, uh, you know, you go in there, you beat him, uh, you get the belt. What was that like? It was like when we, when we used to spawn the gym. He, you know, he used to take me to training camp with him. Uh, I don't know if it was his fortune or unfortunate, we wound up fighting each other. Mm. But I remember everything what he did for the first fight, and I believe that's why I beat him with no problem. Got it. Um, so, you know, I, I had read that you had met the Pope and you met Nelson Mandela. Um, who were some of the favorite people that this career allowed you to meet? You know, people that maybe you grew up being a fan of or, you know, a, a famous politician or musician? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali? When I first met him, he was behind me. I couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. I was fighting in New York City, going to the club. He said, come on, sucker. Come on, sucker. I'm trying to focus on myself, getting ready for the fight. And he just kept talking. So I guess 10, 15 minutes went by. I didn't say nothing to him. Because I didn't recognize his boys. Mm. I'm just trying to focus on the fight. Well, maybe five minutes went by, and I could hear his voice again. He said, come on, sucker. And, but now I'm, I'm getting angry because I told him earlier I had to get ready for the fight and I had to pull it. So I turned around. Muhammad Ali. He gave me this big hug, man. I turned into a little girl. <laughs> and uh, I cried. A couple of tears came into my eyes. And after he gave me a hug, I went out there and knocked the guy on the for a second. Wow. So he was your favorite growing up? Oh, what you told him. He's my idol. Wow, oh, wow. If it wasn't for him, I would, I'd probably be in the Marine Corps, retired from the Marine Corps. Mm. Okay. Did anybody else from your family go into the Marines, or? No, I, I did. What happened was, I always wanted to be a Marine. Okay. And I told my mother, I said, well, I'm going to be a Marine, I'm going to be a Marine. She said, son, just don't go to jail. I said, okay, mama, okay, mama. After I finished high school, I wanted to go into the Marine Corps. Okay. But what happened was, I was boxing for the USA, but so I couldn't go in at that time. So once I retired from boxing, I went into the Marine Corps. Okay, that's pretty cool. You know, so coming up, you know, you get the belt, you're the lineal champ, you know, two-time lineal champ, holding it. Mid-90s is probably a crazy time in your life, right? So talk to us a little bit about throwing the WBC belt in the trash. Well, that wasn't planned. It wasn't? It just happened. It just happened? When I was... When I had the belt, and I wanted to make the organization feel bad because they made me feel bad. So that's why I did that. Hmm. And, and I wasn't afraid, and they couldn't whoop nobody, so I did it. WBC, you know, the organizations, they're always, you know, putting pressure on, uh, on fighters and things like that. You know, I think there's a big misconception, you know, in the internet era <clears throat> where people, you know, wrongly, obviously, perceive that you didn't want to fight Lennox. No. Talk a little bit about like the the things that held that up, like the money behind it, because you know obviously you're not scared of any man alive, breathing or dead. Well, you know, I just really think that Lennox. Let's do the math. Yeah, I be holding it two times. How many times Lennox beat him? I think they one on one in a draw. Right. So that goes to show you that I would have beat him with no problem. I'm the first ever to knock him out. Right. So. He was next. Well, in, in your entire career, you were never finished, obviously. Um, can't say the same about the other guys in that era, all yeah. the rest of them. The only one you could even say was that, that fake stoppage at the Olympics, which is the same Olympics that Roy Jones got robbed in, you know? Right. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, uh, after you, you know, pretty well dominated the first round, you know, you took a shot, but you always came back from shots, even later man. in your career, right? And then let's go, let's go back to Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of guys who knocked him out. Rockman knocked him out. Mm -hmm. I think I hit a little harder than Rockman. Right. So he was wise not to fight me. Yeah. 
Although it would have sold pay-per-views for sure. You know, you get the two giants in there. You know, USA versus Britain. Although does he claim Jamaica? I can't remember which. Yeah, he claims Jamaica. I'm blood clad from Jamaica, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was always a. a you know, the 90s was an interesting time in that sense because, you know, you had Foreman still boxing, mm -hmm. you know, Tyson was in and out, you know, you and Holyfield, like I said, it was, it was really your time in the mid-90s. Um, and you had some up-and-comers, which was, you know, a very interesting time as well. You know, so the, in the pros, the two fights that they always say that we missed out on Riddick Bowe was the Tyson fight and the Lewis fight. Well, me and my went to school together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I wasn't too, uh, I wasn't worried about that fight too much. Right. But Lennon Floyd... Yeah, I, I, I just don't like him. Right. They let him get on the, on the commentary on your fight, you know? It's like, wait, <laughs> you know these guys have a rivalry, and you're going to give him the headset? Right, but, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but yeah, yeah. he's just a person that, uh, mm. just uh, his voice and his name urges me. Mm. He not even now I'm ready to fight. He's ready to go. <laughs> now, now is that a lot of that based on what you felt was an unfair stoppage? Is that really kind of the start of it? Without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lennox knew that. And if you watch the, all the fights during the Olympics, yeah. during that time, well, I always made a comeback and mm -hmm. I would knock the guy out. So he was nice with the referee. I guess maybe they had something going. Yeah, something. Because, I mean, anybody who's watched your career, again, you've never been knocked out of him. Yeah, you've been rocked. I mean, it's heavyweights, right? But you always come back. You always have the heart, you know. Yeah. Whether it was a slug pass with a Vander, because he had a heart too, right? Like, he, came, he came back too. He's the littlest guy with the biggest heart. You know, but you were never the guy that, like, you took a shot and they would, you would just hang it up. You were always coming back and throwing oh. heat. Even if they punched you in the balls 10 times, like, a lot of did. You know, I think <laughs> my record is 45 or more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, you know, for a guy that's... That one is questionable. Yeah, very questionable. I think the best thing they could have got was the drive. I agree. That was that was pretty pretty even, you know, and that was him at his best. And you know, uh, yeah, but then you have the the no contest, you know. And so you uh, you had some interesting fights in your career when it comes to like officials and. Uh, yeah, but people are people. What can you do? What can you say? Yeah. Do you think you intimidated people? You think that was part of it because you were so big and strong and. You know, and, and you didn't really play the corporate well, game like a lot of guys do. Yeah, well, but what you got around me, I was big and strong, but I was, but I was really just like a pussycat. Yeah. Yeah, you're always you a nice guy. He's my friend, I love you, you know? Yeah, yeah. As long as you didn't have a British accent, we were good, I guess. Thank you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you can still make the fight. You know, just make it do what you do. All right, champ, you got any predictions on some of the upcoming fights? So, you know, we got uh, Tyson Fury and and Francis Ngannou. You ain't saying nothing about Joe. About who? Joe. Joe? Yeah. Was I supposed to? Yeah, you know Joe. Who, Joe who? Joe Mama. Ah, walked right into it. <laughs> walked right into it. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. So who you got? You got Ngannou or you got Fury? I go with Fury. Okay. So what about if we get a hypothetical between Bud and Canelo? Bud. You like Bud? I think yes, I do too. Uh, I think I do too. Uh, what do you think about what Clarissa Shields is doing in women's boxing right now? Oh, she's phenomenal. She reminds me of me. I can see that she's in the style. She's just a woman. Step back right, left hook, uppercuts. Oh, no, man, you shot, man. You know about everybody. Yeah. That's one thing a lot of people, you know, you look at a guy who's 6'5", you know, 250, 260. Uh, your ability to infight at that size was something that we've never really seen in boxing. Because you talk about Ali or whatever, and you know, he could infight a little bit, but mostly, you know, guys like him and Lennox were pumping behind a jab and staying on the outside. They might throw an uppercut. Mm. But you could infight. You could fight off the break. You could fight in the mid-range. And that's something I don't think we've seen a lot since. That's why I said when you talk about matching you up against anybody in history, like, you could fight on the inside. You could fight on the outside. You've got power. You've got a chin. You've got heart. You know, you've, you've got to give Riddick a chance, you know, prime for prime against Holy, you know, uh, mm. Ali, against Tyson, against Klitschko. I mean... I think these are all very interesting matchups. Not anybody except Bali. Yeah. He's my idol. He's a legend. I would say so. Absolutely. He's in every greatest. way, you know, socially. Yeah. He's the greatest and I'm the latest. There you go. So if you were going to put together your top five of all time heavyweights, who goes in your top five? How about I leave? I know the film myself. I like it. You got two more, Mike Tyson. Solid. Maybe Buster Douglas. Okay. 
I feel like, uh, I mean, you, you would know, you know the game. Uh, I feel like because of the way that, you know, Buster surprised the world, I, I feel like people don't give him enough credit for his actual boxing skills or physicality. You gonna talk about Buster's skills a little bit? I mean, if you look at his skills, and you compare him to me, mm -hmm. I think we mirror each other. Mm -hmm. Especially when the 94 Tyson, the 94 Holyfield for the first time, I think we look, we look the same. Big, tall, strong, good uppercut. Absolutely. Long, strong jab. I just hit a heart. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I think that's true too, for sure. I mean, the, the, the record, 33 KOs, spells that out. Absolutely. I Absolutely. got mine off the muscle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Take this hand, reach down towards your foot with it. So this one's going to go down. Yep. And then shrug it back up. And then reach down. And shrug up. And down. And that hurt. Up. And reach. And down. And one more time. Good. Okay. Come loop. Just going to work you right here. So push this hand towards that wall and relax it. So I see the scar on your hand there. So obviously, you know, broken it a couple times, had surgery. Only one, I broke it one Just time. one time? Yeah. What other injuries did you have in your career? What were some that's injuries it. that are, that's it? No other surgeries? Mm. What happened was actually, I hit a guy on the forehead. Mm. In sparring or in a fight? No, in a fight. Worse, believe. Okay. What other athletes have, did you, were you able to meet? Did you, you know, you meet anybody else over the years that you, you know, football, baseball? Magic Johnson. You got uh, Michael Jordan. I met, I met a whole lot of top athletes. I mean, I mean the list goes on. And they were all fans of yours, yeah? Absolutely. That's awesome. And then, you know, you were doing the TV show circuit back in the day, too, obviously. But uh, what was that like? You know, you grow up and you're like, man, I see myself, I'll be on TV. You know, that was phenomenal, man. I had a great time doing it. It was fun. I a lot of stars like Will Smith. Yeah? Yeah. Bad boy my for buddy. life. Yeah. You have any, any fun party stories from the road? I really didn't party. No? Any crazy stories of people acting wild that you saw? They always. You got anything you want to share with us? Well... I remember one day, me and Johnny was out having fun. And some dude said, hey man, uh, you look like so-and-so. And Johnny said, well, I beg to differ. And the dude said, what you want to do about it? <laughs> Wrong choice. And Johnny hit a beam, knocked the man out. It's the wrong two guys to test. And he still sleep. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, fighters today, who, whose style, especially at heavyweight, because there's an interesting mix right now. You got Tyson, you got Joshua, you got Ruiz, you got Wilder. Uh, talk a little bit about the heavyweight division. What styles do you like? Who do you think is kind of heads and shoulders? Like you don't like none of them? What, uh, the thing is, the only one I think I had a chance if they for me will be Wilder. Okay. Because of, because of this punch of the Well, other than that, not, they, don't, they don't teach them to move their heads or nothing. Mm. So you think the style of boxing has changed? Oh, tremendously. Yeah. See, for my era, you had to move your upper body, move your head, catch a punch, roll with this. They don't do that no more, so boxing ain't the same to me. Yeah, like, they kind of just fight on the outside and then clinch, yeah? See, and I'm going to tell you something. See all the stuff I knew, I learned that from way back in the Holyfield. Okay. How did I learn that? Because I used to be a spawn partner. Mm. And I remembered everything. And then you turned it back around on him. Come on. So, <laughs> so he, I guess he really is a great teacher. And so I remembered everything. Who's the hardest puncher you ever fought against? All of them, huh? Oh, they're heavyweights. Yeah, yeah, they're heavyweights. But the only one that could catch me playing was Holyfield. He mm. knocked me down. But he did me a favor one day. The first, it wasn't the first fight. I said, you don't know. Hmm. He did me an oh, arm You're good. He did, he did me a favor. I was looking at him. I was sitting in the corner. 
And he leaned, he looked over over there, man. He, wow. Oh, this guy, guy he think I'm something to play with. He made me think. I said, what can I do to do? I do something different. Yeah. And that's okay. I never threw the lead right hand. The bell ring is lead right hand came from out of nowhere. He's still trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> we did the, the all time at heavyweight. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're biased for heavyweights a little bit. Let's get a little bit on your neck. Drop that shoulder. Good. That's how you do it. Yeah, that's how you do it. We'll go right there. Drop your right hand a little bit. There we go. Ooh, Lord of mercy. Getting a workout, huh? I would say so. So now we'll take the heavyweights out. You know, the lighter guys. Who, who goes in your top five all time? Ray Leonard. Ray, well, actually, Ray Robinson first. Yeah, that's a good one. And you know, Ray Robinson was Ali's idol. I guess he's my idol as well. Mm -hmm. One of them. Where do you put uh, Floyd in that conversation? I don't. What uh? What makes you not put him in that conversation? He can't whoop nobody. He can't whoop me, so. <laughs> no, Floyd Floyd's a great fighter. I just think that um. Ray Leonard. I think he would have figured Floyd out. Mm. Ray Robinson would have knocked him out, but mm. you know. Everybody else, I think he would be. What is, what, is, what is that thing? It's a BRH. Big red hammer. That's what it is. Big red hammer. You gotta use a big red hammer for Big Bo. How about that? The Big Daddy. You got little, the little Bo or Big Bo. So if you guys didn't know, go down in the, in the bio below, grab a shirt. I don't mean the little Bo. What do you, you, you don't have your shirt on, man. You just rocking Adidas? You no. Know. Watch. Pop in here, show them, show them your shirt. Grab one of those to support the channel. You gotta support the channel. Yeah, or else. I don't want any of that smoke. smoke no. None of us want. Did you see this? Uh huh. I'm the only hitman who had all four belts. Right. WBO. W all of them. WBC, WBA, and what's the other one? WB. IBF. IBF, yep. Yep, yep. The main man. Big like a truck, but smooth like a cat. That's why they call me Big Daddy. Now, when I tell you, I want you to pull that elbow back pretty hard. Okay. So go ahead and pull. There we go. That was good. Yeah. Same thing over here. Mm -hmm. And pull. And solid. Put that right there. Uh huh. Look down, and then breathe back. In. Breathe deep breath, and all the way out. Oh wow. Yeah. What was on your pre-fight playlist for music? Who did you listen to to get yourself hyped? Shake the fast and watch yourself. Shake the fast and show me what you were. Mystical? That's um, girl, you got the biggest ones. My was just shake your ass. Who's seen that, Johnny? Mystical. Mystical? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I love mystical. Back off the No Limit, no limit label. Mm-hmm. Center. You don't. You didn't have Roy Jones on your playlist. Absolutely not. Roy got a silver, not got a silver. Y'all must have forgot. They say. Mm -hmm. Poor Roy. Roy is, Roy is a good dude. That's my buddy right there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And one more time. All right. Stand up. Take a few steps there. Keep your back. Say one step. There you go. Show me what you were doing. Tell me what you were doing. Ready to die. Uh, see, I fainted out. Uh, there we go. Oh, foo, foo. Hand right here. I'm going to have you move it in and out like that. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to hook you right there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Keep moving it. So, you know, there was a picture that went pretty viral on social media lately with you and Andrew Galata. You know, are, are you guys buddies now? or? or? Well, I'm called you to him. Okay. I mean, we're not fighting. We're older now. I mean, I forgive him, so I guess we, we, we could be buddies. Did you get revenge or you give him a little ball tap no, when you saw him? No, I, I should have hit him in his nuts. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but no, I, that was no moment. You walk him to the handshake and go bop like that because you're like, hey, remember, yeah. remember that three piece you gave him my balls? Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he. 
That was the right hand and left hook and then another left hook. Freaking A, man. Freaking no. A. Andrew Galata. Yeah, that guy. No. My boys don't want to see him. No. Top five heavyweights. And uh, if, if you didn't include Buster Douglas in that, what other heavyweight would you put in there? You know, Joe Frazier, Larry Holmes, you know. Exactly. Joe Frazier, Larry Holmes. Kenny Norton. Joe. Uh, Remember Joe? No, who's that one? Joe Mama. God, they walked right into it again. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Got me again. Got me every single time. So you wouldn't, uh, what about like uh, Ruiz or uh, Rockman? You know, those guys were kind of around your era. You would have dusted them all. I mean, there's so many guys. We got Ken Norton. Mm -hmm. You got Big George Foreman, Joe Frazier. There's a lot of guys I'll Liston. put in, Sonny Liston. There's a lot of guys I'll put in way before we got to those guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of the current crop, who's your favorite? Heavyweights. I guess. Um, Wilder. Wilder, exactly. Wilder. If you could have fought somebody that you didn't fight, who would it have been? What, in my era or yeah. this era? Of any era. Lennox Lord. <laughs> still, still want to fight. Still yeah. want that fight. You know, if you I could don't... fight any person, alive or dead, throughout all of history, who would it be? A guy by the name of Dr. Dr. Lenny Rubenstein. <laughs> that'd have been like me, that'd have been like me fighting Frankenstein. <laughs> you mash it back together? Absolutely. Okay. That's good. All right, okay. So we go like that. I don't know. When it's time you put a guillotine on me. <laughs> exactly. That's an understatement. Okay. You, you locked in there? Mm -hmm. So you go ahead and pull your way back. Solid. All right there's good. There we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Set me up. <laughs> Set me up for that one. Got me to relax. Oh, okay. Snap me. Yeah. All right, you stand back up. Sink that out. They set me up, man. Let me buy it up. I thought you were my partner, man. You're double <laughs> Where you learn that from, man? Feel the job. Feel better? Yeah, I yeah. feel a whole lot better. Yeah, stand I'm up glad there. you didn't tell me about it. Because <laughs> you just told me about it. Mm. So, man, why are you joking me? Shit. Man. There we go. Say, show me what you're working with. Make sure you go support his YouTube channel here. Really, Big Daddy Bo it. Boxing. It's a knockout. There it is. And the social media platforms? Instagram. Facebook. Wait and Joe. Joe who? Joe Mom. Ah, got all you suckers out there. Yeah, make sure to go show up some love on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we're going to be putting out a bunch more clips like that. He's going to have commentary on fights, some boxing tips. He's going to, they're going to be branching out and they're going to be doing some branding with some, uh, some boxing gyms in different cities. So if you want to have his name associated with your boxing gym, it's going to drive traffic to your door no matter what city you're in. Like we said in Tampa, make sure you come check out this beautiful facility here at Franklin Boxing. Uh, buy some of his merch. If you want some of this merch, we got it too. And we appreciate you guys tuning in to listen to the champ, hear some stories, get his back cracked. and. Uh, show us some of his cool dance moves. So we appreciate your time, champ. Uh, it's awesome to be in the presence of such a legend, a Hall of Fame, or somebody that entertained all of us for years and years and years, and we're grateful for you, my man. Well, thanks, Pat. God bless you. God bless you. See you guys on the next one.